It's allergy season. Wait, no it's not. So why do you sound like this? Ugh, I do not sound like that. And even if you don't think you do, it's really hard to tell if you sound nasally. But if you want to find out and you want to do something about it to speak more clearly, then you better stick around. And I'm going to make it super simple by focusing on just one sound. Simple my paper, not easy. Because you don't want to be the last person to notice. Oh my god, is that what my voice sounds like? It's so whiny and nasally. Ah. And if advanced pronunciation and accent skills are important to you, well then, subscribe to my channel to learn a whole lot more about mastering an American accent. You might remember Janice from Friends. <laughs> Listen to that annoying voice. But when people say a nasally voice is annoying, it's just a bias. The real problem is comprehension. You understand half those words. When you speak in a nasally voice, the sounds, the consonants and the vowels, are coming through your nose, not through your mouth. So they get kind of squished through there. I could see that. Mm. It's simple to fix, it's just mechanical. You just move the air from here to here. May your shrill nasal voice ring throughout our streets and brains. Easy, right? Simple. But that doesn't mean it's easy. And there's one specific sound in English that can help us with that. You want to know what it is? I'd like that. I'd really like that. OK, so in English, you might have noticed that our jaw seems to open a lot more wider than it might in your first language. And one of the most open sounds that we have is the eh sound, as in rat or hat or sat. But if your jaw is too closed, you're going to sound like eh rather than ah, eh, ah, eh, ah, rat. Not set, but sat. And not het, but hat. And I know it might be a little unnatural or uncomfortable to open your jaw so much more than you're used to. It's not easy to break out of your comfort zone. But I want you to do it anyways until it becomes easier. Does it get easier? It gets easier. So why is the eh, ah distinction so helpful when we're working on nasality? In English, we only have three nasal sounds. And a nasal sound means the air should be in your nose. And those are n, m, and um. So ah can actually help us with nasality. Here's an experiment for you. If I take rat and change it to ran or sat, and change it to Sam, or hat, and change it to hang, can you hear how that difference in the vowel changes just slightly with the sound of a nasal after the ah sound? Gosh, I never noticed that before. We're lazy. We take shortcuts. Our brain and our mouth want to work together to save time and energy. We predict the nasal. We know it's coming. So we move our jaw up in anticipation of the m or n sound, but you don't win by taking shortcuts. So when you're nasally, your eh sounds like eh, and people misunderstand the vowel. For example, ran sounds like ren, sam sounds like sem, and hang sounds like hang. It's a bit off. Can you hear the difference? Don't worry, because if not, I made a special short to go along with this that has you listening and repeating eh and eh with and without nasals. Check the pinned comments below. What about that time with Meg when Riley laughed so hard <laughs> milk came out of her nose? How does this actually happen? Well, your mouth and your nose are actually connected. There's a little flap of soft tissue in the back called the velum. Think of the sounds like k as in cat or g as in get. If you can feel the back of your tongue lifting and touching some soft tissue, that's your velum. Also, if you yawn a big yawn, even a fake one, you can maybe feel the velum lifting in the back. With a little practice, you can open and close that velum, or door as I like to think of it, and completely separate the nasal and oral cavities. So remember those three nasal sounds? To create them correctly, we need to open the door and let the air out of our nose. And for all the other sounds in English, we need to close the door and let the air out of our mouth. So if you're 
sounding nasally. It's because you didn't close or open the door completely, and it's a little bit drafty, and you're letting the air out your nose when it shouldn't be. So how can you check? Nostrils. <laughs> Put your fingers on your nostrils, or pinch your nose, so that you can feel when there's vibration. For example, take one of the words we just mentioned, R-A-N, ran. Pinch your nose and just do the N. No, no. Can you feel that? energy, man. It's energy. It's vibration. The air should be in your nose, trying to escape because it's a nasal, but not until the N. So to check if you're nasally, pinch your nose and start with the R in ran. Sometimes stuff comes out of my nose. If you feel it coming out your nose, it's because you left the door open. Lift the velum up like you're yawning and then bring the air out your mouth. You might also be accidentally nasalizing vowels too. So instead of eh, you might get eh, which I would totally expect if French were your first language. Parlez-vous français? And there are plenty of other languages that already have nasalized vowels, which you might be carrying over into English. So if one of those is your first language, be really careful that nasalization isn't affecting the clarity of your sounds in English. <laughs> it's a bit of an accent. <laughs> and that's a problem for your listener. Because I can't understand a word you're saying. Hang on, because I'm going to show you how to denasalize your voice so that you can sound more clear when you're speaking English. <laughs> that's wonderful news. And if you're finding this difficult, that's because it is. But lucky for you, I have a two-hour free masterclass all about controlling nasality. It's one of the many topics that I present on the last Thursday of the month live, so get your seat by clicking on the link below. Now, let me show you my best trick so that you can speak more clearly and less nasally. What is this going to involve? Nasal lavage. Ew. No. I'm going to give you some exercises so you can train that flappy velum so that you can slam the door closed. And you already know the first trick. Pinch, pinch, pinch. Go slow and be very conscious of where the air is. Pay attention to where the nasals are in the word. At the beginning? No. No. At the end? Home. Home. Or in the middle? Singer. Singer. These are not easy, even for me. So how does that feel for you? stings the nostrils. Tell me down below in the comments if it's easier or more difficult for you depending on if the nasal is at the beginning, middle, or end of the word. Another really good trick to train your velum is to blow your cheeks up with air and then poke them with your finger. <laughs> Try to feel the velum pushing back against the pressure as you're poking your cheek. And this is another great trick. Yawn more often. Besides being fantastic for your brain, it's really great for your velum. Yawn some big, long yawns throughout the day and really feel that velum moving. It's a great way to denasalize your speech. And don't forget to open your jaw because you need space for all that air to go so that the sounds come out of your mouth instead of your nose. So when we have the ah sound followed by a nasal, we have to be extra conscious because we don't want to go forward and put the air out of our nose too early. Remember to keep your mouth open and put the air out of your mouth. Repeating this is going to get you muscle memory. So let's use the same list as we did before. Rat, ran, rat, sat, Sam, sat, and hat, hang, hat. That's how they should sound. The eh ah should be the same with the nasal and without the nasal. But if you're telling me, when people say, I just don't hear it. I've got your back. Check out that short that I made in the pinned comments for a little bit more listening and shadowing practice. Remember when we talked about eh versus eh? Ah? Well, check out this video that I have for you that's just on that. I'm accent coach Bianca, and I'm on a mission to help people understand accents better. See you in the next video.